Welcome to Power Up, the uptime podcast focused on the new hot off the press technology that can change the world. Follow along with me, Alan Hall, and Itosaurus Phil Totaro as we discuss the weird, the wild, and the game-changing ideas that will charge your energy future. All right, guys, this week, some really interesting ideas on the docket. Uh, this first one has to do with replacing parts of a gearbox. And if you've been around gearboxes long enough, you realize that there's a nice set of bearings in them, and sometimes the bearings get overloaded and they start to spin inside the housing. When that happens, it creates an unevenness, and you essentially have to pull the gearbox out of the turbine, set on the ground, and work on it or replace it. Uh, but this idea from Renew Energy Maintenance, which is uh, part of Tachyon now, I believe, has a, a way of basically taking some some machinery, some equipment up tower and reboring this gearbox where, and putting an insert in or a sleeve in so that the bearing can be set properly so that the gearbox then functions correctly. Now, Phil, this is a big money saver, right? To, to have a piece of equipment that saves you from bringing in a crane? Well, it and it's not only that, it's the fact that you know, on-site maintenance is something that's always subject to a certain level of precision. But when you start talking about doing gearbox repairs and replacements, and this is, as you're mentioning, you know, if you basically have um, a situation where the bearing raceway kind of machined itself out, you're probably going to have to fit something new in there. But in order to do that, you've got to kind of refresh the bore. And so what this idea is, is effectively a um, tool that allows you to um you know rebore this hole and stick a sleeve in there then put the bearing you know the new uh bearing raceway in there so that everything still kind of fits in a in a compliant way um on the original gearbox housing but it's doing so like you mentioned in a way that it doesn't require a huge crane for lifting the gearbox out and lowering it to the ground where you would normally want to do repairs um of this level of precision um you know when when we talk about doing up tower repairs on like a blade you might be able to to get away with you know shaving things down up there and dang while guys are dangling off and ladies are dangling off ropes and and whatnot uh you know these these technicians the the reality of that is there's a there's a certain level of precision involved with that and you can probably get away with you know minor um uh, you know idiosyncrasies or minor variations in in the quality of that type of work when you're talking about boring a new hole in the gearbox housing it has to be done with a certain level of precision in order for everything to still you know fit properly like the bearing raceways the sleeve that they're talking about in this patent application uh, everything's got to be able to fit in uh, a certain tolerance level. So the fact that they've invented this tool that's going to allow for, you know, this repair that would normally involve a large crane pick, or, you know, even if it's a turbine level crane pick, you're starting to talk about, you know, extra tens of thousands of dollars, if not hundreds of thousands with a big crane, um, to be able to pick the gearbox out, we'll pick the nacelle off, cover off, pick the, the, the gearbox out of the nacelle, uh, lower it down to the ground, repair it, then put it all back. Uh, this is something that you can basically, you know, pull a few things apart up tower and, and do this machining uh, in situ, uh, which is a, a pretty attractive capability to, to have for, um, you know, any, any kind of repair. So, you know, kudos to uh, Renew Energy Management. What this looks like to me is the fact that even if you're a little bit off in your machining and you got to redo this every two or three years, you're still going to be money ahead than you were coming out with a crane if you have to redo this process here and there. Now, when you get into anything, just like Phil said, the precision of machining out anything for a bearing or any kind of rotating assembly. I, I used to do, so I've done, not used to do, but I've done some uh, high performance engines in my past. And if you get something just a little bit wrong, like you're, it's toast, right? So the fact that they've figured out a way to do this 
fantastic. I think this could be a good, really big boost to the industry. Um, I don't know personally if Renew uh, is doing Renew Energy Maintenance is doing this out in the field or not, or if someone else has licensed it from them or not. I do not know, uh, but I hope they are. Well, our friends at Alliance for Sustainable Energy have a patent out that talks about uh, basically a, a fillable wind turbine blade. So the concept is you build a, a sort of a superstructure of sense and, with, and you cover it with fabric, an inner and an outer fabric cover, and haul this lightweight, inexpensive piece all the way out to site. And when you get to site, you can assemble it. But then at the end, you fill uh, the two fabric layers, between the two fabric layers, with foam to then create a wind turbine blade shape. Uh, and there's been a number of ideas like this. Like GE had something similar to this, where they had a fabric covered sort of superstructure to lighten the the blade up and make it shippable. There's been a couple of, of attempts at this. This one is a, a little more unique, though, Phil, in the sense that they're using a filler or foam to create the final shape. The the Alliance for Sustainable Energy is the uh... Hold it well. Part of what they do is they serve as the holding company for the intellectual property assets of the National Renewable Energy Laboratory in the United States. And so, this technology is something that not only was developed with government funding, um, but is theoretically, you know, able to be licensed or sold to, uh, to anybody in the industry that that would want to try to, to um, you know, build and implement this, or at least partner with. Uh, and rail to kind of further this uh, this area of research. So while this is a clever idea, and I use this term quite quite a lot, you know, I, I think this is clever, that's clever. It, it is indeed a clever idea in that you know the engineers came up with a unique solution to something that is a, a challenge in terms of transportation and logistics. Do I really like this, though, from the standpoint of it could be used in industry? Probably not, because this is a little too... There's too many kind of unknowns, uh, as well as differences from conventional technology that, you know, you don't win prizes uh, for, for you know, clever ideas, really, at the end of the day. Supply chain companies that build and sell components for wind turbines, they do so on the premise that it's part of a system that can be, you know, looked at as financeable by both the development community and the financial community and the insurance community, for that matter. Um, this doesn't necessarily fall into that category of, you know, it's it's a, unfortunately a bit too radical, uh, or it's too much of a departure from conventional technology. I think to be really widely used in industry, is there some type of application that this could um, have in the future, potentially, uh, even potentially from the standpoint of repairs, because you could, you could see designs being tweaked in the future to allow for, you know, a, a cavity where, um, you know, you could have some kind of, you know, uh, foam core that could be pumped in and, and could solidify into, um, you know, a cavity that could provide some kind of structural support or, um, something like that, that, you know, if you detected there might be an area of cracking or damage around the tip, maybe you could have something where you could, you know, pump in some kind of, um, you know, foam core or foam supportive material. Um, you know, so there, there could be aspects of this that could eventually be used in the industry. Do I see this replacing conventional blades in 10 to 15 years? I do not. In my mind, I could see this working for like, you know, an, an off-grid application with a seven-meter blade or something of that sort. But when you get to utility scale size, there's just not enough consistency to be had with it. And if if it fails, that failure is just too damn expensive to uh, rely on a technology like this. That's my opinion. Well, they say necessity is the mother of invention. And this is the case for this particular patent on our fun patent of the week. It's an apparatus that sticks to the bathroom wall above a toilet urinal or some sort of shower head if you're in the shower. And it allows the user to lean their forehead against it uh, while using the facilities. Uh, this 
is obviously, uh, you can imagine this in pretty much every bar and casino in America. Phil, I think this has inherent problems. Now, if you're leaning forward and putting weight on your forehead while maybe inebriated, let's just say, uh, it seems like you could stumble and fall and really hurt yourself while you're trying to use this device. You know, that is that is a possibility, but I I actually think this is uh, something I I can't imagine if if the whoever invented this hasn't sold like millions of these. I don't know why because this sounds as you just mentioned like it would go into every, you know, public space uh imaginable and and there would be people using it. I mean, I don't necessarily uh you know, think I'd be at a urinal long enough to rest my head, but I, I could imagine, you know, I mean, even just as a safety precaution, like you could have something there if somebody's like, you know, eh, and they they're a little inebriated, they they might need like head protection on um, against the wall. I mean, I you know, I like this one. I I think this uh, I think this has merit. I want to see it that can stick to the back of an airplane seat in an airplane. Because I sometimes try to rest my forehead on the seat in front of me and sleep on an airplane, and this would be fantastic. See, all kinds of use cases for this stuff. 